for a mic, I think. Uh, oh, they changed it or changed it around. Okay, so welcome everybody to uh, Zoom, our first uh, Historic Preservation Commission via Zoom. Uh, let's see. You don't need to read that the viewing thing. If you can hear me, you know that. Members of the public who wish to submit public comments, they do so in advance via email, no later than 12. I think that was for the uh, people that were looking uh, on the email list and saw this earlier. So uh, that comment was correct at that time and it may have changed uh, sometime today. So uh, Sherry, could you take the roll call please? Commissioner Akins. Here. Vice Chair Quinn. Here. Commissioner James. Here. Commissioner Combrey. Here. Commissioner McHatton. Here. All present. Okay, great. So if you can see in my window, I brought the uh, leg in that we usually hang outside the house so everyone can stand with me and pledge. Oh, you got one. There we go. Or you can look at that screen, pretty screen right in the middle. So if you'll stand with me and we'll say the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, ready, begin. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the, the flag. flag. Of the United States, States of America, America and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under, under God, God indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Great. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, so this is the June meeting. Normally, we would uh, be having an election for chair and vice chair. I am going to turn it over to Lucas to tell us why that's not happening today. Yeah, so that item is not on the agenda, but I will certainly provide you with information as it relates to that. So um, as as members of this this uh, commission are probably aware, there are members that are have currently have um, uh, expired, um, that, that their terms have, have currently expired. And those, those items need to be um, reconciled through city council prior to uh, the chair and the vice chair um, positions being seated. Um, so until that's taken, taken place, um, that item has been tabled until further notice. Now, council is, is considering that item and certainly we'll be bringing back, and this is all, for all commissions, this isn't just for the Historic Preservation Commission. I had the same conversation with Planning Commission last week. Uh, because they also have uh, members of the of the of their commission that um, have expired terms. And if I could add one quick point: for those commissioners whose terms have expired, you continue to be seated and to serve until uh, you are either reappointed or a new commissioner is appointed and seated. So uh, the terms have expired, but your seats remain valid, uh, and any decisions you make tonight remain valid. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification, Matt. Okay, so uh, and another clarification, uh, I was at the, watched the city council meeting Tuesday night, and then I called uh, Gail Davis uh, today to uh, verify the information. Uh, in the past, uh, for those of us that have been here more than one full term, uh, you submitted a new application, according to Gail, that is not in place now. So what Gail asks, if you want to be considered for the next uh, term, is that you send an email to Gail Davis and uh, let her know. So no application. Yes, Thais. Do we know who the um, terms we're talking about? Yes, we are. So there, uh, myself, uh, Valerie, and Cindy. Thank you. Up for, or who, their, their terms expired uh, May 19th. Thank you. Is there any questions on that part? Okay, and the hand, I know we talked about this. For me, the hand is easier uh, than trying to figure out the little icon somewhere. Um, okay, uh, public communications. Again, this is submitted by email, will be provided to the Historic Preservation Commission at this time. Matters raised at this time may be briefly discussed by the commission and will generally be referred to staff and or placed on a subsequent agenda. Under state law, other than for emergency items, no action can be taken at this meeting. Uh, museum representative report is next. I will tell you that the 
the museum just opened the office side, which is located on the west end of the building. Uh, we have one full-time employee, an executive director, and then three part-time employees that are there. Uh, as for the museum opening as a whole, as you might have seen, the state has just allowed museums to open up. Uh, we anticipate that the museum will open up uh, to the general public sometime in July. And that's all I got. Okay, next item are consent items. Uh, minutes for February 13th, 2020. Are there any corrections to that? Uh, no hands. Okay. Do I have a motion then to approve those minutes? Make the motion to approve. Thank Make you, Cindy. Motion. I second it. Thank you, Valerie. Uh, all in favor? Just raise your hands. Great. Okay, thank you all very much. Uh, disclosure of site visits and ex parte contacts. Uh, as some of you may know, the opportunity arose to have a Zoom uh, tour. Uh, thank you very much to Randy and to Kasha and to Tom who were there and conducted that tour. Uh, I enjoyed it. Um, and so the final two people who were selected to take that tour uh, by names in a hat uh, were Cindy and myself. So that's uh, my contact uh, that took place uh, between, since the last meeting. I don't any have any contacts. Thais. Um, uh, several months ago, actually quite a few months ago by now, back in 2019, I did go over to Randy and Kasha's house on their invitation uh, when they were first contemplating, well, maybe not first, but at the time they were contemplating this um, project and was given a tour in person. Okay, great. Thank you. Cindy. Um, I contacted Randy after our Zoom meeting and I had a personal visit to the property as well. So. Excellent. Thank you both. Okay. Uh, any other visits? Great. Thank you. Okay. We'll now move on to public hearing item number two. And I am going to let Lucas and Matt take it from here. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Chair Aikens. Um, tonight's item is a proposed two-story addition and demolition of a portion of an existing single-family residence in the construction of a new accessory building requiring a major work permit, which is which is the per, which is within the purview of this of this commission, and it's located at 410 uh, Tico Road. It is referred to as historic landmark uh, designation number 15. The applicant is Tom Henson of Becker Henson. Nixto Architects on behalf of the property owner, RGL 2001 Long-Term Trust, uh, referred to as Randy Levitt. Um, the, the item itself is, is, uh, is being requested to be continued tonight. Um, and we're requesting, the staff is requesting a continuance. The, the reason for the continuance is to provide staff the opportunity as well as the applicant to work with and address concerns that have been raised by the public prior to the full commission considering the item. Um, when this item was, was sent out on Friday, staff's recommendation um, was to adopt a resolution. That has changed since uh, staff has received and provided, in fact, um, public comment uh, to this commission. Um, so staff, as well as the applicant, would like to have an opportunity to um, respond to those, um, those comments in kind. Um, in addition to that, because this is a public hearing item, we do need to open it up for public hearing and also allow for the applicant to give a, pre a brief presentation. Uh, the commission also has an opportunity to ask questions, and I certainly encourage that. For, for this meeting and for this item, because that will also give um, staff as well as the applicant an opportunity to, if there are questions that, that um, the commission has, it'll give us an opportunity to go back to the table and, um, and provide necessary responses to those. Okay, Lucas, on the uh, public comment, since right at this time, we're not set up for people outside to make those live. 
Uh, you received a number of public comments. Can you please tell us what that number was and give us some kind of idea of, on where they lean? Yeah, so right now we have six public comments that have come in officially, three of which are in support and three of which are in opposition. And Mr. Siebert, you might just identify the commenters either way by name. By or name for each of the commenters? Okay. So I have, I have one commenter. Um, her name is Cynthia Ward Lindenbaum. I have another commenter. And their name is Darcy Gamble. I have another commenter by the name of Rot. I'm probably going to butcher this name. Rajit. Ranjit. Ranjit. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Dillon. Dillon. Dylan. D right. Dylan. That's <laughs> even easier. <laughs> I'm not good with that. Um, in addition to that, we have a comment from Craig Walker. <clears throat> A comment from Elise Depoit. And a comment from Shannon Nelson. And that is that is the conclusion of the comments that I have here. Okay, great. Thank you, Lucas. Uh, this is, almost feels like it's rehearsed. Lucas and I have been talking throughout the day. Um, each of the commissioners should have received uh, each of these comments in their email. Can you confirmed to me that you received uh, the six comments today? Three, sorry. Yes. Okay, Gina? Yes. <clears throat> okay, sorry, you're not on my screen. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, Lucas, I'll turn it back to you on where, how we proceed now. Yeah, so at this point, um, if the applicant would like to give a brief presentation, um, I, I think it was Tom that said that they were going to give a presentation or was it someone else? Yeah. Well, I, I, I'd like to, to say something if now's the time, if not, I can be patient. Um, and then Tom can say as well. Is this a good time to go, you want Tom to go first? No, nope, Randy, please. Uh, Lucas, is it okay? So yeah, that's, that's fine. Yeah. Randy. Keep, it, keep it brief, please. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to say that when uh, Kash and I uh, bought our home in 2007, um, we were, uh, we love old homes and we really care about the tradition and um, really have done our best and continue to, um, uh, to just make, really appreciate the specialness of our home. And when we purchased the house, we had two children, we still have two children, but they were one and three. Now they're um, 15 and 13, and now they're in separate bedrooms, and uh, the situation and our, our needs have changed, and the house has really become functionally obsolete uh, for us. It was designed with, as Tom uh, will show, um, originally with a Jack and Jill bed bedroom and a small, minuscule bathroom in between, uh, and um, it's really not... Uh, not up to standard now, and especially if you were to share that, you couldn't begin to share that with two rooms. Um, this addition that was put on in 1946 um, basically creates a hallway running through this second uh, bedroom and makes it unusable as a bedroom now. And uh, so we're really wanting the when we the first thing we did when we moved in was we went to the city and we got landmarked in Mills Act because we. We, what we wanted and what we were told was that there would be an understanding that we could change the house. We could make it meet our needs, but if, as long as we did so mindfully and, and with, um, with care and with the uh, community as a part of it. And that's perfect for us. We could have gone and we could have done exactly anything we wanted to uh, at the time. Landmark houses at that time were optional. Uh, but we didn't do it, unlike other people, including owners of other uh, Smith spec homes who did what they wanted and then got um, mills acted. So now 
and because the situation has changed, um, we started working over a year ago with Tom Henson, who has vast experience doing um, amazing um, landmark historic houses. And we've been so grateful to him for his loving kindness and care. And we've devised a plan that would, would help to protect the oak trees that, that, are, that surround the house, that would make the house much more usable, bring the, the uh, footprint, print, footprint back more towards what it was originally, uh, and create a design that, that would enhance the community. Uh, we went and shared our plans uh, with many of our contiguous neighbors, and everybody who we've shown those plans with have been supportive. Two of them, so much so that they've even written letters uh, that you've received. Uh, Darcy Gamble was actually on the commission when we were landmark and Mills acted, and um, she looked at the plans and um, really approved of them, and then wrote a letter, which I really, which is really, really important. Basically, um, um, basically, you know, my understanding is corroborated by hers that. You know, we're not by landmarking and, and going under Mills Act, we're not creating a museum where it has to be um, able to change and become um, functionally a usable space and, and change with the times. And uh, from one of Darcy's footnotes in her letter, I pulled up directly from the Department of Interior, the National Park Service under Preserv Technical Preservation Services in bold letters of that you probably can't read from here, but I think that uh, I can make this available. At any rate, the link is is there in Darcy's letter. Uh, project meets the standards when the overall effect of all work is consistent with the property's historical, historic character. Um, that this accommodation of change is basic to the process of rehabilitation. So it, it's designed to accommodate change. And um, Darcy's, Darcy says that the overall effect of all work is consistent with the property's historic character. She also, by the way, worked for more than five years as cultural resource director for the National Parks Conservation Association. While she was there, she worked with scores of national park units in the context of caring for their historical structures. So she's, um, she's really, you know, um, extremely well qualified to discuss this. She says that preservation when applied and interpreted thoughtfully allows for careful modification of homes to reflect the times and needs of their inhabitants. Functionally ob obsolescent homes are good for museums, but not for thriving communities that inhabit their historic homes. The HPC has an opportunity to become even more preservation friendly, one decision at a time while preserving Ohio's historic fabric. And the last thing I wanna read from her letter, it is my belief that, that a a full environmental impact report uh, is not required for the project at Forte Tico, that the project is within what is allowed by the City of Ohio's Municipal Code. The plan for 410 Tico is in line with the Secretary of Interior's Preservation Standards. Demolition of the 1946 edition should be allowed because even though the 2008 report did not explicitly state that the 1946 edition is not of historic significance, it was absolutely clear from the post-Hazeltine report that it most certainly is not of historic significance. As required, required by the City of Ohio's Municipal Code, this project and the importance of HPC's support for it are in the City of Ohio's best interest because it is affirmative decisions like these that will inspire more preservation and historic designations. Um, sorry for rambling on, but uh, it's really important. And it was important for us to make the decision to preserve the house. And, and um, I, I feel like I felt a little bit um, kind of being forced to um, defer uh, this to a later date or have staff be um, change their mind from supporting to become non supportive. It makes me really sad. And I'm, I'm, I just want to share that with everybody. So, but we're trying to do a great job and um, we put so much mindful care into this um, over, over the year. That's now I want to give the floor to Tom. Before we move to Tom, uh, just thing to, uh, to clear things up, Randy. Uh, when we toured the home, we were told that you were the owners who landmarked it. But when I look at the post Hazel team, I'm seeing a 2017 date in there. And so, I don't understand that. 
Uh, I don't. It says uh, uh, the current owners, Mr. and Mrs. Randy Levitt, purchased the house on November 30th, 2017. So it would be, it, um, it would be two, 2006, right? Yeah, I'm no. guessing that. I'm, 2007. Yeah. And yeah. we landmarked it a year later. Okay, I, 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 I'm just uh, pointing that out for yourselves because, again, that information is in the report, and it may be something that you want to get clarified. Just so Great. people understand that you were the owners when it was originally landmarked. I, I think that's a big deal. That's correct. And and I, so I and, and again, you know, we don't want anything left confusing. I so I'll turn it back to the two of you. Okay. Should I go ahead and sh yeah. share the screen here? Yeah, first, um, I'm, I'm Tom Henson of Becker Henson Nixto Architects, and this is my business partner, Jacob Nixto. And we do all residential and we specialize in historic um, structures. We do maybe a few a year. We happen to have, including this house, two George Washington Smith's, Smith houses going now, and two Edwards and Plunkett houses, and a Reginald Johnson house. So it's what we're passionate about and we love to do and we love sweating over every detail and normally our work is making kitchens when we find uh, houses of this era always had kitchens for servants so one of the things we do is convert the kitchen into a room that the whole family can use um, master bedrooms are always very small and bathrooms are very small so the second thing is we create functional master bedrooms and then about half of what we do is undoing damage that's been done by insensitive remodels and additions that have happened since the house was originally built because there weren't always um, historical review boards watching what happened. So um, along those lines, do you, you wanna um, pull up the site plan? I mean, this, is, this might be a little choppy. This is abbreviated a lot. Um, so sorry in advance. So, this is the site plan. And uh, Tika Road's on the northeast of the house. The front door is actually, you can see the green arrow on the west side. And it looks like the house was oriented to take advantage of really spectacular views up to Topa Topa that way. Um, there are two good sized French doors in the living room that look up at that view. Um, the house is also completely uh, engulfed by oak trees, and it's part of what makes the, the whole place seem so magical. But it also um, creates a challenge for getting extra square feet because the original house was about 1,400 square feet. Over the years, it's gotten about an extra 50%, another 700 or 50 so square feet in additions. And now we're adding about that much again so we can, we want to end up with a, now it's a four bedroom house with three bathrooms. We want to end up with a four bedroom house that's designed really well as if George Washington Smith were alive now um, and we're, we're overseeing this. Um, so um, next, next slide. So this, um, the living room is the most incredible room in the house. It's, it has a beautiful wood ceiling and again, there's these two French doors that look up to the north, the east northeast toward Toba Toba. So, in the 40s, somebody wanted an extra bedroom and they, they added it here. And it's just baffling because you have to walk through this bedroom, I think, where Randy and Kasha are sitting now to get to the bedroom. So, it pretty much wipes out that as a bedroom. Uh, it also blocks the view up to Toba Toba. So we felt like the only way to do justice to the house was to just take that off. Um, th there's no way to, to fix it. To get the extra square footage we need for um, a, a real master suite, we, we needed about 600 square feet and there's just no place to put it without outside the footprint without um, cutting the oak trees, um, cutting down oak trees or um, compromising the design of the house. The, the, we're proposing not one oak tree is being touched with this um, design. So what we're proposing to do, first of all, is right currently there's a laundry room 
at this end of the kitchen and in a small booth and two tiny windows. And this is probably the best view in the house um, toward Topa Topa. So we're proposing moving the laundry room from the end of the kitchen over to here and then taking the, there it was a Jack and Jill, we're taking the Jill bedroom and moving it seven feet to the east to make room for a laundry room here. Um, pretty much everything else stays the same. Um, the, the bathroom, the little bathroom that is so funny is functioning as a master bathroom now is just staying because it's a non-suite bath for this bedroom. Um, we're adding a wing, well, a, a little side piece for a bathroom for this bedroom on the east, um, which is pretty much the same as the previous bedroom, just moved out seven feet and it's keeping the same French door. Um, then upstairs, uh, Smith would always have had the quality folk bedrooms off the entry. Um, the, the extra bedrooms might have been like for servants would have been off the kitchen and that, so that this bedroom works okay for that. But um, we're, so we, we, so we have two guest bedrooms or a bedroom for each child in the wing here. And then we're adding a stairway in the entry hall to go up to um, master bedroom, a small covered porch, a decent sized walk-in closet and a decent sized master bathroom. So that's, that's the general idea. Maybe next. Uh, we'd also like to add a small meditation building out in the garden. Um, um, that's not much more to that. I'm going to continue. So this shows, this is the existing front elevation. Um, this was originally a garage and it was converted to a dining room. This, this here was added. And this is the existing bedroom that's going to stay exactly as it is. And the best place we could find to add room <coughs> was right here. And it's something that George Washington Smith did commonly. And we have, there's another house I'll show you a picture of that was built in the same area where he did his exact thing. Um, nothing really is changing on the south elevation. The second story is back in the distance, so you wouldn't even really see it from the south. Next, please. So this, this is the affront to the, the house we felt. Originally the house ended here and these two French doors looked sort of off in this direction to the view and the addition blocks the view and they probably added it here so they could retain this French door. We don't really know, but it, it creates a really um, strange situation. A, you have to walk through one bedroom to get to the other and B, it blocks this really important axial view that looks like it was designed from the beginning to take advantage of. This is the existing laundry room that we're proposing to move and add French doors instead. So from the kitchen, you can look out to the garden, look out at the view. Um, this French door is pretty much moving straight east from where it is now. Um, this is the stair hall. And then this is a covered loggia outside the master bedroom that all houses in Ojai should really have with, with how warm it gets in the summer. Um, this is the existing north elevation. You see it from, you sort of see it from the driveway through trees, but it's not very visible. And this is, this is the addition that we're proposing. Pretty much keeping things the same, except adding, adding a piece on top, because it's really the only viable place to add on this property. Okay. This is just the um, proposed um, east elevation with the trees shown and continue. This is the little uh, meditation building that's kind of nestled in the garden. Um, there's some uh, tucked in uh, the shade of some oak trees. You can continue, please. So just quickly, this is, this is the way the front of the house looks today. Um, this was originally a garage and this is an addition. Um, next, this is the back of the house and I'm standing 
toward the view so you can see this is this is one of the two french doors in the living room the other french door is here behind the addition um so we we feel like that that just doesn't doesn't belong there um again it was added in 1946 um george washington smith was out of the picture and nobody knows who the architect was uh, next this is an aerial shot showing this this is the living room here the french doors are more or less here. The view of Topa Topa is up that way. So it's just, it's jarring and strange to be looking at this addition that's only maybe 10 or 12 feet from, from this um, wall. Um, the proposed addition would go here. Okay, next please. This is the Frothingham House, and it's in Santa Barbara, a few blocks from our office. And it's very similar to this um, house number. It's House C is the, the Levitt's house. It has a similar entry. It has the same living room. It has a garage on the right. It was built around the same year. It's a simple Andalusian style. The only difference is they have a bedroom here. So we feel pretty comfortable in saying that if George Washington Smith had come to the site and had the constraints that are there now that he would have thought that was a, a viable solution. Um, and it's, um, it, 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 it makes the house more George Washington Smith um, rather than detracting. Um, next please. Uh, this is the Lindley house and it shows the idea for a, a loggia. <laughs> They're very common. Um, it's, it could be a, it would be a sleeping porch, and then there's a, a French door below as we're proposing. Um, next, this is a picture from the Levitt's living room, and if you move far to the south end of the living room and look out the southern French door, you can see Topa Topa through the trees, and the view's really better than it looks here. But anywhere else, this really offensive addition's in the way. Um, next. That's it. Oh, that's it. Okay. That's, so that's the uh, abbreviated version. Any, any questions or comments? Lucas, do we have a copy of those slides that are available to us? Yeah, the whole package was submitted to the city. Okay. Yeah, so it's a part of the attachments to the, uh, to the agenda report. Okay. <coughs> uh, were those living room pictures uh, part of it? I think. I don't think the living room pictures were a part of it. I'm just looking photos. <laughs> sites. We can send those to, will we send to um, Sherry or. No, those were not. No, they're not in there. <laughs> we can email those too if, that, if they'd be helpful. Okay, thank you. So Lucas, is it a time for, are you looking for questions from the commissioners? <laughs> yeah, I mean, at this point, um, because we, staff is recommending a continuance that we would ask if the commissioners have any questions um, to pose those questions and make it a part of the record uh, as we take this item back for, um, for additional research and consideration prior to bringing it forward to the full commission for consideration. And um, could I ask the uh, <coughs> the person sharing their screen to not share the screen so that we could see it? Thank you. Sure. Thank you for the presentation. <laughs> but it's not now is the time to see the full commissioners. Okay. Uh, yes, Thais. Well, I was just going to ask Lucas. He said it's a time for questions. If you don't have any questions, but you have a comment. Yeah, comments are yes, absolutely. Comments are accepted. Uh, I would just refrain from uh, stating a final decision. Um, at this time is we haven't completed the full public hearing. I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> in other words, if you've got a question or a comment, that would be very much in order, but I wouldn't state how you intend to vote because we don't yet have the full record. Oh, right. Okay, fine. Well, 
I would be, I guess I might as well go first. So one thing that I've not really seen in the report or heard in the commentary is Edward Libby's thoughts <laughs> um, on what he did. And I'm speaking to you right now from the kitchen of Spec House A. Um, and so I'm pretty familiar with um, these houses and I'm familiar with the fact that yes, George Washington Smith designed it, but he designed it at Edward Libby's um, behest. And Edward Libby had a, a view for each of these houses, including House C. And House C was to have been a small family home. So I think before we get too far down the road, we have to include um, Edward Libby, who, as we all know, is a benefactor of Ojai. He developed the Arbolata. Um, he's a visionary and what his contribution was. When I look at the um, plaque, which you probably won't be able to read, it's on House C. All it says is designed by George Washington Smith in the Spanish Revival style. Um, Arbolado House C is one of three spec houses commissioned by Edward Drummond Libby. And I think Libby's contribution should be in the report and what it's going and the changes that are going to be affected to his vision by um, any changes to the property. I've been in the house and, and Randy knows I've been there and we talked about it. Um, and the livability of it is complicated, that's for sure. And I understand where they're coming from um, in trying to have the family in that house. So what I would, would like to see myself, if we could, is this come to us more in phases. There's so much of this plan that I would be 100% or 95%, whatever, enough an agreement with if we did it separately instead of in this in this um, huge package. Uh, and I think that might eliminate some of the other uh, comments that came in earlier because the kitchen, it, you know, it definitely, it's pretty much the same as it was in the beginning. And uh, I am seeing it, it would have been one of the first things I would have wanted to change myself if had I bought that house. So I support Randy and Kasha in, in this effort. I just think trying to look at this whole package as one thing is making it difficult for people. Not that. Great, thank you, uh, Vice Chair Quinn. Um, other people that have comments? I have a question. Cindy? Yes, I have a question, um, question for you, Tom. Did you look at um, expanding on one level, or were you always looking at making a second story? We, tr we really tried to expand on one level because we knew that would be simpler. The problem was no matter what we did, we came up with either taking out oak trees or compromise design. That's so. my question. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, Commissioner McCatton, do you have any questions? Uh, not at this time. I, I've read through this twice, and um, I, I, I just want to continue to uh, go through learning more about this before there's a decision made. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner James? Yeah, I <clears throat> liked what Thais said, although I don't know that we need to go through it piece by piece if there's time, I guess. But other than that, I agree with Thais. Great, thank you. Um, most of my questions I have asked uh, Lucas in the uh, today or yesterday, so I think most of those are met at this time. Um, I do want to thank uh, Randy and Kasha for opening your house up to us for the tour that you did. I appreciated that very much. It was very helpful. Um, and I Tom, think, yes. I'm sorry, if anybody wants to come for a, you know, we promised to, to 
um, stay six feet away from from any other commissioners. But if you want to come, it's you can really see more if you are here live than from a my you know Zoom call. So I, you could really experience the flow of the house and see what 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 we're trying to do and the sense that it makes as a solution. But you can't see any other way, really. Okay. Uh, Randy, I see that uh, Tim Hazeltine has joined us. Is he uh, a yeah. part? He's the, uh, the uh, historian, and uh, he and, and his partner, Pam Post, and um, uh, we, I guess we were told that, that they shouldn't speak. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to recognize that they were. But it, I'm really happy that, that Tim and Pam are there, or at least Tim. Great. Thank you. Um, Lucas, Matthew, anything else that we as a commission need to know at this point in well, time? Before, before I see um, Commissioner McCadden has her hand up. Oh, correct. I'm sorry. That's what I was about to recognize. Hi. I just wanted to say that, yes, I would like uh, a safe distance um, tour of the property if I could. I originally didn't put my name into the pool because I feel like as commissioners, we all bring something different to the table. And I was really hoping that the... Um, our two commissioners that that own historic properties and one that owns a, a spec house um, would be the ones that were to tour. But if you were opening it up to others, I would definitely would like to see it. Well, absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. It would be our pleasure. Uh, uh, do you want to, if you want to arrange a time, I can give you our number now and you can just call or I don't know if Lucas wants to arrange something in a different way, but we're easy. We could probably do it through Sher Sherry or something. <clears throat> Yeah. yeah, we can we can certainly do this offline. Thank you. Okay, Matthew. Um, I Lucas. see Commissioner James as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'd like to also see your house. I used to live down the street from you, so I'd like to okay. see. You. Of course, great. It's it's really our pleasure. And just to add um, one clarification: certainly, if the historian, uh, Mr. Uh, Hazeltine. Or Ms. Post wish to speak. They're 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 allowed to speak. Um, they may find themselves. Um, they may see that they wish to retain their comments for the later for a later date. But they're not prohibited from speaking. So that offer is open. Okay. Are you a commissioner, uh, uh, Mr. Summers? No, I apologize. Um, you may have joined after I introduced myself. My name is Matthew Summers. I am the city attorney for the city of Ohio. Um, and the, here to ensure that um, all relevant laws are followed. Hence, um, if your his, historian wishes to speak, they may do so if they wish. Uh, right now, he's connecting to audio, according to my screen. Uh, to, yeah, I was there. Oh, there he is. There's Tim. At once. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Historic Commission. Um, at this time, I think it would be best if we continued our comments to the next meeting. Uh, that will allow us to um, um, take into consideration your comments as well as the ones that were in the six letters that were sent to the city. Um, and I think that would probably be the most efficacious way of us addressing those at this point. And then we could have at the next meeting have a, a formal presentation. Okay. That'd be that fine. Thank you. And Tim, just uh, if you could just share with the commission, because um, you, you have a great reputation and you've been doing this for a long time. And if you can just share, you know, a little bit about your experience, um, <clears throat> that would be helpful. Um, Post Hazel Time Associates was formed in 1998. And the senior partner is uh, Dr. Pamela Post, um, whose um, PhD is in architectural and art history uh, with, a, with a focus on American architecture. Um, we have worked on about 500 projects since 1998 um, in Ventura County, Santa Barbara County, San Luis Obispo County, and Los Angeles County. And we have done a, a, about seven or eight George Washington Smith houses, uh, primarily in Hope Branch and Montecito in Santa Barbara County. Hey, thank you, Tim. Uh, Lucas, anything else from you? Um, 
And Matt, correct me if I'm wrong here, but we still do need a vote tonight, correct? To continue the item? Uh, consensus is fine. If I take it, there's no objections based on the comments to date. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes, Thais. I just add one more comment. I looked at my notes. Sorry. So one thing that's bothering me about this that I think that they should have the opportunity to uh, address in reports or anything is the fact that all the history books on George Washington Smith, all the things in the library show that house the way it is or the way it was, one of the two. But with the second edition on, how is anyone going to recognize that as the same drawing that's in the book or the same thing. So, and I'm not, I'm just asking if maybe you could address that. Right at this moment? No, no. But yes, okay. Thank you. It's just a comment for you to think about. Yes, thank you. That's a very good comment. Great. Thank you, uh, Vice Chair Quinn. Um, so, are we ready to? Closest, Matthew, Lucas? I think so at this time, yes. Okay, we uh, still need the can... consent. The... Yeah, the consensus, consensus of the commission to okay. continue. So do we need to make a motion and a second on to get that or just ask for a raise of hands? What's the uh, yeah, just be, is anyone opposed? Okay, is anyone opposed to our continuing this action item until the next meeting? I'm not seeing anybody. We've got a few people on here scrolling back and forth. Okay, I, I don't hear any disagreement, so we will go ahead and do that. Again, thank you all for those of you that joined us for uh, this. Thank you so much. Public yes, hearing, you. we appreciate it. And for your thank offers. You. To, for this. And just to confirm for those who aren't familiar with it, the next HPC meeting is set for 5 p.m. on Thursday, July 9th, uh, 2020. And um, we'll to be determined if it's by Zoom or back in person. We're awaiting county authorization to return to in person. Hi. This is Ula. Nice to meet you guys. Hi. Nice to have you join us. Hello. <laughs> okay. Well, we're moving on to the next item on our agenda. So again, we thank you all. You're welcome to stick around and hear us talk, or you're welcome to go on your way. But again, thank you all for joining us and. Jacob Mixto, sorry for mispronouncing your name at the beginning. No okay. Thank you. Good. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thanks, Randy. Thank you. Okay, we will move on. And to, um, oh, Chair Aikens, go ahead, Matthew. Yes, I sir. am available to stay for the rest of the meeting, but um, I'm also available, uh, can drop off if you don't see that there's a need for continued legal services for the, sec the remaining portions of the meeting. Matthew, I love you dearly, and I'm not paying for your uh, attorney bill, but I think we can go from here. Unless anyone else thinks we need to no. do some arm twisting with that <laughs> going forward. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate you uh, walking through everything today and uh, helping us come to the correct decision. Yes, thank you, Matt. Happy to do it as best I can. We will get, uh, we'll get it set for a decision for you guys to be able to make on the full record. Thank okay. you all, and take care. Great. Thank you. Okay, moving on to item number three. Item number three is the a proposed plaque language for the City of Ojai Historic Landmark number 28, Perkins Baker residence, located at 1104 Foothill Road. Uh, you, you'll remember this is the home that's uh, owned by Carrie Apple and uh, okay. Tracy Albert. Yeah. So, uh, see, so we, on the plaque language, uh, we did, as you may know, may have seen them on this one, maybe not. Emails coming in to me directly from uh, Craig and uh, Elise, who's in Prescott, and we try to funnel those down through. And I'm not, the email on this one actually came in March 11th. Um, Elise had a couple uh, suggestions. Both of those are incorporated into this language. Uh, Craig had one other paragraph to replace the last last paragraph and that, you know, I give deference to Craig because he was the one that worked with uh, Carrie Apple uh, in putting together the uh, request for landmarking. 
uh, on the last paragraph in this, does everybody have the example of the mm -hmm. black in front of them? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in the last paragraph, uh, um, Craig had suggested replacing it with Franklin Perkins was instrumental in modernizing the Ojai Library, the Ojai Presbyterian Church, and the Ojai Fire District. Margie Perkins helped establish the Ojai Art Center and the Ojai Music Festival. Mr. Perkins died in 1929. Margie married Morgan Baker in 1958, and the Bakers lived here until 1975. So I'll open it up for other commissioner comments. Um, I have a comment. Um, Hi, Mr. Comfrey. I think it's it's interesting information, but it doesn't exactly pertain to the residents. It's more of the story of Ojai. And uh -huh. I noticed that in Elise's rewriting of the theater, which we'll talk about next. But um, it's interesting. I just don't see that it's part of the landmark information. Okay. That's Ojai history. Makes sense. So uh, would you stay with the current text that's in there, uh, Cindy? Well, all the other landmarks, the language is about the property, specific to the property. You know, my landmark, both of my houses didn't have anything about what the the occupants did to contribute uh -huh. to the town, even though they did a lot of things. So it kind of seems like we're veering away from standard landmark language. That's just okay. a thought. Okay. Do you have, so, so, uh, so again, uh, is the existing paragraph something that you would support or do you have changes yeah no i i like the existing paragraph Hi, you know Karen. the fact that he died early and that she remarried and stayed there I, I don't even wonder why margie married in 1958 and lived there till 1975 as part of the landmark language you know that even seems a little odd but um yeah i know it's, it's easy to get caught up in the story of ojai because it's interesting Thing, but I don't know that it pertains to the landmark plaque. Yeah, for me, it was, well, uh, Morgan Baker is in there so that we understand why Perkins Baker residence is in there. Mm. Just to myself. Yeah. Uh, other comments? Uh, yes, Commissioner McCatton, and then I'll go to you, Vice Chair Quinn. As a um, traveler who likes to look up historic homes, whatever city I go into, all over the world, I, that's what I'd love to see is more information. What, how did they contribute to the community? Uh, why did they come to Ojai? You know, I, I'd like that wording. I don't know if it's uh, who the plaque is for, if it's for uh, just facts of the residents, but to me, um, it goes deeper into the fiber of who we are as a community and how, why we are who we are. And I don't know, I, I appreciate the additional language. Okay, so you're leaning towards what Craig submitted or the original? What Craig submitted. I, I like the idea that we get to learn a little bit. I didn't know about that, like learning about the music festival, learning about things that we still are doing a hundred years later that were started by these people. It's, to me, it's very relevant. It makes the house even that much more interesting. Great, thank you very much. Uh, Vice Chair Quinn, thank you. Yeah, um, I'm like, I'm okay with Craig's language. You know, and I see Carrie's here right now, so she yes. could also speak on this, but um, the way if, if we didn't do Craig's paragraph, I think that the first sentence of that last paragraph, the reason for the landmark name of Perkins Baker residence is because it was built by that whole first sentence needs to go because it's really an awkward sentence. And Mr. Perkins died in 1929 and the rest of the paragraph. So I'm open to what um, Carrie and the rest of the commissioners say as to whether we use Craig's language. I think it's interesting too, um, because some of, some of what's historical about these homes is, is the who besides just what. So I'm open to whatever everyone else wants, as long as we don't put in the reason for. Thank you. Great, thank you, Vice Chair. Quinn, uh, Commissioner James. 
Do you have any comments? I like that, you know, each paragraph is succinct and to the point in some of these, and it's easier to read. It's a lot clearer than most of the signs are. Um, I'm not sure how I would change the last paragraph. Do you have any ideas, Thais? Well, I would just leave off the first sentence, period, and just oh, okay. and have the rest of it. So Mr. Perkins died in 1929. Margie married Morgan Baker in 1958, and the Bakers lived there until 1975. Right. I guess that would be easier to understand, more clear. It's just the, the reasons for the landmark name is, in my mind, awkward. Okay. Um, Carrie. Um, your, hi guys. Uh, your uh, compadre there on your right. Um, hi Brian. Hello. So obviously we're going to defer to you all, but um, I like what Thais just said. I agree with her, but I also like what Craig put in because I agree that I want to know about the people that built this house. I want to know what they did and who they were and what contributions they made to Ojai. I think that's what I think that's the most interesting part of it. Um, so I would vote to keep that in if I had a say, I don't know that I do, but if so, um, you know, that's, that would be my, that would be my choice. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, okay. Who would like to wordsmith this? Thais, Cindy? I'll do it. Tina? Um, okay. So I would like to move that we accept the language of the plaque as written with the exception of the last paragraph, which will be substituted by the paragraph Craig Walker submitted. Okay. And I'll second that. Uh, was that, a, okay, that was a motion then, Thais? Yes. Okay, and se second by uh, Gina. Commissioner McCat and Gina. <laughs> <laughs> um, other discussion then? Okay, uh, Sherry, can you call a vote for us, please? Sure, Akins? Yes. Quinn? Yes. James? Yes. Convery? Convery? McHatton? Yes. yes. And Convery, we'll go back to Convery? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, great. Okay, thank you all. Uh, thank you, Tracy and uh, Carrie, for being work here. I think they're thank gone. You all. Thank, oh, you all. thank you all. Thank okay. you all. Stay safe. You two the same. Thank you. Bye. I don't see the cat out there. <laughs> okay, we're going to move on to uh, item number four then. And this is the theater plaque text. Uh, there were two versions. There was a longer version and then a shorter version that was 67 words shorter. I was actually going to stop by and count the number of words on the uh, elementary school plaque and the number of words in front of the city hall, but I had to keep reminding myself during the day that we weren't. I wasn't going to city hall. Yes, Cindy. Um, I have a question. I got an email with a PDF that Elise wrote, um, and it wasn't noticed in the agenda. I mean, I don't know if it's legal because it just came in an email like a couple of days ago. So it was never included in the packet. So that was one question I have about her wording. So it come, I would say it comes in as a comment. Um, yeah, to, to that specific it. item, but yes, wasn't included as part of the packet because it did come in afterwards. Okay. So do people have recommendations to, or changes, suggested changes to what's on, currently on the black there? Yes. 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 Cindy. Hi. 
Um, I like the language that is in the agenda. Uh, I think Elise is as much too long for the plaque. And it, again, it's the story of Ojai, which is in our brochure, you know, a lot of that information. But on the plaque, I thought the first paragraph was a little bit um, awkward. So I I worked on that. I can read it to you. I didn't email it to everyone because I don't know what our protocol is these days. But if okay. you want, I'll read the first paragraph again. Would you like, would that be all right? Please. Mm -hmm. um, so the first paragraph, the Isis Theater, known today as the Ojai Playhouse Theater, was constructed in 1914 in the Mission Revival, and it should be capital M, capital R, Mission Revival style architecture, featuring a symmetrical facade, shaped roof, quadrifoil window, white stucco exterior walls, and cantilevered visor roof clad with terracotta tiles. It was built and owned by John J. Burke and was the first building in Ojai to be designed in this architectural style setting a standard for future design of the downtown corridor. The Mission Revival style period lasted from 1914 to 1932. So that was my only, that's my change is the first paragraph. Okay, thank you. Um, other people, other suggestions? Vice Chair Quinn, there we, there we go. Um, I like what Cindy, what Commissioner Convery um, stated. I think it makes it a little more clear. Um, I don't care for um, Elise's. I think that the original reads better and conveys the information better. So I think whatever changes we can make within the original, like as Commissioner Convery suggested, would be my um, liking. Okay. I like what Cindy said too. Gina, you have to yell. <laughs> Yes, Gina, I'm sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Well, well Chair Aikens, or, when we were doing our training, said he wanted hands. <laughs> right. Uh, yes, yeah, sorry. Hands. I'm, 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 yeah. I was kidding. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I do like I like how you reworded that, um, uh, uh, Commissioner. But I, I, I kind of like the last paragraph of Elise's, the, uh, maybe a, a combination of the two. I, I, I like the, uh, you walk away feeling good about it when you realize that for over a hundred years, the theater has entertained multiple generations of Ojai residents. Yeah. I don't know, just, it's that feel good when you walk away and you go, yeah, that's why they did this because of that. So I, I wish we could con combine that part. Don't you think it says that in the plaque language? Operating in nearly continuous use, the building houses Ojai's first and only surviving theater. It's like the same info. The oldest operating theater in Ventura County. I felt like that's the same information. I, I do. I just, I, I like the, um, I don't know, the, the visualization of um, hundreds of years and multiple generations of Ojai residents. It's a visual that um, I think that when you're walking by and you read that, it, 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 it hits you on a different emotional level when you go, wow, I, I understand that. My, my kids, my grandkids, they'll all be here to, to enjoy this theater as well. So I don't know. I just think it brings an emotional side to it. Uh, Commissioner James. Yeah. For some reason, I, there was a part, I don't know where I saw it, where it said, talked about Khalid renamed that to the Ojai Playhouse Theater. Yeah, and that was, that, and that's what I was looking for. And yeah, I have, we have an email that came in from uh, uh, Tanya uh, at 4.30 today mentioning that. And I wanted to change a sentence in there, but I can't find it on this one that I have here. So, Oh, it's on Elise's. Oh, okay. <clears throat> uh, Thais, that's, apparently that's in on the kitchen table in the other room. 
Can, can you read that part for us? Again, I think that goes to that uh, middle paragraph. Um, well, the, the one I'm looking at is the one on the leases where um, she, yes. the Al Alvar family owned the theater when Water Main broke, um, which is the only mention of the family's name that I know of. Hmm. Yeah, I thought we had, I, I, we, we were supposed to discuss this in the March 12th meeting, and then that meeting got canceled. And so basically we're trying to recover from uh, three months of downtime to get back up to that. So, and that was one of the things that Tanya said. Uh, she said in her email to Sherry, uh, uh, I had provided comments to Brian via phone when this was first presented. Unfortunately, they don't have those comments written anywhere. I think the only comment I remember is that after the 2008 change of ownership, it wasn't clear that it came back to the family. And so, and I thought we were aware of that and it was ready to be presented to the commission, but again, apparently that didn't make it. Brian? Yes. I think the 2008 was Mark Hart, Hartland, Hartford, whatever his name is, and it was a lease option. I don't think it actually physically changed ownership. I think it was a lease option for a couple of years between uh -huh. Glenn and Mark. So that's why it's not in the records. And, and, and that was in one of the write-ups we looked at, that fact that you just uh, called to our attention was uh, written up in the, was um, noted in the markup. However, it, ne it didn't, and what Tanya's saying is it never mentioned that it actually came back to us for that lease option purchase. And that, you know, she was concerned that it kind of, the language kind of dropped at that, at that couple. And didn't come back but to the that. Purchase collection. never went through. You know, the lease option was in place, and then he didn't option it. Uh huh. So there was no purchase. You know, he leased it with an option to purchase, and he didn't exercise the option. Okay. Does anybody have that text in front of, front of them? Yeah, I do. Okay. Um, in two thousand seven to two thousand eight, under new ownership. The theater underwent a major remodel to accommodate a live performance stage. And then it says in 2014, the theater incurred major water damage. So we can change that. Um, just that one um, where, where it says under new ownership, it could be under a lease uh, or it could be, it could, uh, or we could just put in, like Tanya said, to. Um, I, I, I can't say Capron is her name. Sorry, but people apologize. Anyway, um, that it, somehow that it was came back to them for for operation. Uh, well, Colette is on that since is it 1997 or any? I'm any what? Colette. Hello. No, is his name. Their name is not mentioned on this one. That looks like this. Yeah, yeah, th yeah. I'm looking at that. I'm just trying to remember when. Uh, uh, Colette and his brother, I think it is, purchased the theater. It's, well, that, oh, that's, it says 1983. It says 1983 on Elise's. Okay. So you have that. So you have a markup or you have Elise's text that talks about that, Sherry? Yeah. yeah. We all have that. But I think, Brian, the answer to your um, thought is that. On the flash language, it should say in 2007 to 2008, the theater went, underwent a major remodel. It, it wasn't under new ownership. It was a lease option. So just take those words out and then it's okay. legal. You know, Mark yeah, partly way. optioned it thinking he was going to buy it and he likes to restore things. So he redid the interior and then he said, you know what, this isn't for me. So he didn't exercise it, but he okay. didn't spend money fixing it up. So in 2007 to 2008, the theater underwent a major remodel, but it was not under new ownership. Yes, that, that sounds excellent. Is there somewhere in there? I mean, uh, I, I would just like to, uh, because they're, I mean, they're basically saving this for the community and meant to save it. I'd just like to see a mention of the uh, al Amwar family. Okay. You know, I could happen in 
the sentence before the one we're talking about uh -huh. says in, in the 1980s under new ownership, but it could be under the ownership of the um, Alamore family. Right. The name was restored to the Ojai Playhouse Theater. And if we wanted to, you could give the um, exact year instead of saying in 2000 to 2008. Yeah. I so you could give the year, um, Elise says 1983. So in 1983, under the ownership of the theater underwent a major remodel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, uh, Valerie. And the next sentence says in 2007 to 2008 under new ownership. Yeah, we got rid of the under new ownership. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, so, Ryan, are you happy with the wording in 1983 under the ownership of the Alawar family? Um, the name was changed the to the Ojai Playhouse Theater in 2007 to 2008, the theater underwent a major remodel. Is that I, what we're talking about? Yes. yes. Yeah, I think I, that meets what I was trying to do, you know, again, because they've worked closely with us on this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and then can I ask Sherry a question, please? Sherry? Sure. Do you want me to, the paragraph that I wrote, do you want me to incorporate the language that I just read in the second paragraph and send that PDF to you? Yes, or not PDF, just in Word. And then um, I was trying to follow along, but I know I didn't get it all. So yeah. yes, please. Okay. Okay. And I did, you know, I'm following along most of the other stuff. But if you want to go ahead and make the other comments as well, that's yeah, great. I, I already have the documents. It's easy. Perfect. Thank you. Great. That would be very helpful. So do we want to then see those changes done in a plaque format and take one more uh, vote for approving it in the, the next meeting or go with the what we're put together now? How would the commission like to proceed? Yes, yes. Commissioner McCat. I would like to see it on a plaque again. Okay. So one more round. Yeah. A second that. Okay. Yeah, nope, I think that's fine. I don't. I, any other, everybody else in agreement with that? Yeah. Great. Okay, thank you. Okay, that finishes item four. Item five is an update on the, I uh, had, Lucas just put down the Downtown Historic District Ad Hoc Committee progress report just to remind us that we have that. Um, You know, you and I will talk and figure out what I need to be doing to <laughs> get involved. <laughs> Sorry, it's been crazy. No, I, I, it's been it's been weird. So, yeah, I would like to um, maybe if we could uh, either zoom or use the um, maybe do an outdoor courtyard kind of a situation where sure. you and I have a meeting before our next meeting. Yeah, yeah. Is sometime next week good for you, or is that? I, I have no plans. Okay, I'll, I'll be in contact with you. Thank you very I'm, much. I'm quarantined, so. <laughs> According to my kids, I'm just old, so I have to stay <laughs> home. <laughs> but they did come up. Finally got to see them. Okay, uh, future agenda items. Lucas, uh, joint meeting with the council is... Anything going on on that? Yeah, I can, nothing at the moment. However, I will certainly bring that to the attention of, uh, of staff and, and bring something back to you in the, in the near future. Okay. okay. Um, other things, there's some, there was something on in that action item. Is, is a, um, a future agenda item to go over the chair and vice chair at some point, or is that should that be on there? It is. So uh, as we started at the beginning, that is dependent upon the council basically saying that uh, it's okay for those who have asked to be a part of the next commission 
being ratified by the council members before we can take a vote. So right. uh, I think I was just Lucas, you should put it in a month slot just as, you know, we could always move it, but it doesn't need to be in there somewhere. Uh, okay, Lucas, you're a bidding man. When's it right, so happen? right now I would not put it in until we have we have confirmation from council <laughs> okay. regarding those three seats right now. Okay. So soon, Gina. In the near future, yes. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about that. Okay. Uh, any other future plan uh, agenda items? Uh, Lucas, anything that you know that's coming up that's going um, to July attention? 9th, I do have an arcade sign permit. Um, okay. Sircana Global Goods, 302 East Ohio Avenue. And they also it's, have a work permit accompanying that. There's a work permit. Oh, there's a work permit accompanying that as well? Yeah, it got submitted after the packet went out. Okay. 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 Uh, and 410 Tico, the idea when that will come back before us? I would not. The reason, so we didn't we didn't do it date specific because I, I can't make a, a promise that we will have it on for the July 9th meeting, um, potentially for the August 13th, but you know, fingers crossed that so we can get all those those comments and, and concerns addressed. Okay. Uh, anything else from commissioners? No. Okay. Uh, on future agenda items. Okay. Uh, planning report. Um, I don't have favorite. any. Yeah, I don't have anything to add today. It's just glad to see everyone here. Um, even though we're doing it virtually, it is. It's good to be back uh, into the swing of things. Uh, last week was our first planning commission meeting too, um, and it's good to get back into the swing of things. One emerge, thing, emerge from some of this. One thing you could report on is you're going to landmark number two tomorrow, the Lad House, for an inspection of their compliance ADU. And you're going to take a picture of the plaque that we've never gotten a picture of. Oh, is that is that the um, is that my meeting in the first thing in the morning? Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So all well, yeah, that is that's that's something to report on. That's for certain. I have yet to visit that site, so it'll be kind of a fun site for me to visit as well for a final. Green and green. Oh yeah, it's a green and greenhouse too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Uh, commission comments. So, anytime the city council mentions the word commission, I attend their meetings. I attended a Tuesday night's meeting for a couple of different things, budget, as well as they were going to have a little discussion on uh, tree commission and other things. And then they had a little caveat sentence in there. And if you want to make any adjustments to the commission, now would be a good time. And uh, there was a motion by Bill Weirich that. Uh, all commissions other than the Arts Commission uh, be moved from seven to five. That was seconded by Randy Haney, and then they went on to discussion. Uh, after discussion, uh, he, uh, James was asked that they uh, staff look at the uh, code that talks about that and recommend adjustments to the code at a future uh, commission member. The other thing that uh, they they're talking about as far as commissions go and they've done it with the planning commission is that with five five essentially uh, the four council members and the mayor that each of them would uh, nominate an individual as that uh, slot comes open to be on the commissions there was the discussion on whether it would be from at large within the city or at large within the valley um uh, the uh motion passed with it being uh, uh up to the valley i'm always curious to watch that happen since i live in oakview um and that it would remain and going from uh seven which was four city residents and three outsiders to now three city residents and two outsiders so that is something that will come again before the council uh, I was watching just in case they decided to do that and was, so I, in the past they've asked us 
uh, as the commission, what our opinion is, what our vote will be, and in all the different times they've asked us in the last six, seven, eight years that I've been around, uh, the commission has always uh, voted to have unanimously to have all seven members. So I just wanted you to be aware that that discussion took place on Tuesday night and will come up again before council. Uh, any thoughts? I have, of course, I, of course yes. I have a thought. <laughs> um, so, you know, we had a very important discussion tonight on 410 Tico. Um, and we're supposed to have a liaison from the council. We, I didn't see them up there. I don't know who was assigned for tonight. And I, and I think it's important to have seven people, if there's anything we can do, and to expect council is going to somehow be involved with us seems um, a little far-fetched because out of all the meetings that we have I I don't I don't even think the council comes to half of them and this to me like this was a I would have expected someone to have been here from the council for this discussion because I think it's going to be a controversial issue and it may even get taken to the council for approval perhaps or I, who knows? I mean, eventually, of course, it will go for approval if we approve it. But I'm saying that it might have to be, um, oh, what's the word again? Um, referred to the council. Yeah. yeah, Lucas knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> if, we, if we were to turn down that project, I'm just saying, um, we could appeal to the oh, appealed, yeah. Yeah, to the council. So I think seven voices, seven people. I spent this entire week working on 410 Tico. So um, when you have a project like this, it's really important to have been through every stage of it, um, looking at it from with an open mind and um, reading everything you can read. And, and so there was no one here to hear what we had what we had done so anyway we're back to the thing i i think it's important to have the seven member um people who and people who are knowledgeable about the history on ours and on um, people who are knowledgeable on all commissions and then that can i just sneak in a question for lucas's which is um so it's scheduled for that project is scheduled for planning on june 17th i think is the date but will it still go to um, planning commission. Okay, fine. Thank you. Is that no, a no? It will not. Okay. It will not because it requires it to come to this commission first for consideration prior to planning okay. commission consideration. Um, in addition to that, I'd like to just uh, inform the commission that um, I received word that the council liaison is uh, council member Haney. And he tried to log in a couple different times and wasn't able to log in. Okay. Um, so it he there was an effort that was there, uh, and he is he he is the liaison for for this commission currently. Yeah, I think for April, May, and June. Also, uh, Councilman Wyrick, who had called me about uh, something else to do at the museum, had said he planned on attending this meeting because he knew, as you said, mm -hmm. uh, Vice Chair Quinn, that it's a hot spot. Yeah. Uh, and, and again, no matter what decision we make, uh, that can be appealed to the you know, city council. Right. And I think he's listening on channel 10. I'm not sure that he's actually, um, there we go. He, he logged in. Yeah. I'll go to, okay. um, McCadden, Gina first. Hi. Please. I, 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 I agree Valerie. with, um, with Thais that it, I think it should be seven members just on the trouble that we had, uh, going forward with our ad hoc when, um, we can't have, from Brown Act, we, we have to keep it under a certain amount of members. Taking on a, a historic district is a, it's a huge undertaking and having it be just put on to two commissioners because we can't have a third or we can't have two maybe separate ones that we originally had um, as we get moving on and we have more work to do, uh, it's going to be harder with just five members, if, assuming we do get to go forward with, a, with um, the historic uh, district. And um, I mean, you know, we we are on paid, and uh, we are willing to be here and put in the time and do a lot of research. Like, to, I mean, I've I've 
done so much reading uh, just on, on this property alone. And, and, and I feel like I have so much more to really understand it. And um, I think that uh, just on a quorum and on an ad hoc standpoint, I think that moving forward, it's, it's important to have the seven, uh, seven members. I agree with you completely. I have that written down. Uh, yes, Commissioner James. Yeah, did, and Cindy, you'll be next. It sounded like you said that they agreed to, if they want five on each committee, except the Arts Commission. Is that they, they, uh, they, th the motion was to, and I was listening to it just before we started now. So the motion was for the city to look at uh, adjusting the language to reflect the different options. One option was going from seven to five. Uh, they said in there that uh, Parks had uh, expressed an interest on five. Uh, the Art Commission, they would remain at seven because they have so many subcommittees that do so many different things, which always comes back to when we used to have lots of subcommittees and then they told us, uh, and. Lucas and I have had this talk, ad hoc committees are only for temporary basis. And if you have a subcommittee of, you know, so many people, you're basically violating that. But so they, uh, the uh, Arts Committee Commission, uh, someone had just run into them, not not in preparation for this meeting, and they had expressed their, expressed their desire to have seven. Planning Commission, of course, had gone to five by uh, a decision of the council um, months ago. So I was, I was watching. I'll just leave it at that. That's my. I think because if one person is missing, then we don't have a meeting or two people. I guess so. That's yeah, yeah, problem. makes it tougher. Commissioner Convery. Um, I think it's a huge mistake to downsize the commissions, all of the commissions, because Ojai is booming. You know, yeah, there's quarantine, so we had to all put everything on hold, but it's absolutely berserk, and it's been berserk for, what, five or six years now. The Oaks, the whole, whole downtown corridor, I mean, I can't believe the planning commission is down to five people because there's so much going on. How many things are now going to slip through the cracks because there aren't enough commissioners to address it and the city council is overwhelmed. So I'm, I'm actually baffled and wonder what the motivation is to cut back the commissioners when they are, their plates are so full that surely they need the extra help. So I would like to know what that motivation is. Um, but I think it's a mistake with the way Ojai is going with the building and the new owners, with the Oaks, with the Playhouse. Um, you know, there are barely enough city staff to keep tabs on what's happening you know mm -hmm. we're having the, the issues with some of the landmark houses that aren't being addressed mm -hmm. the changes are happening under our noses mm -hmm. so that's my opinion great thank you very much uh yeah in the past when they've talked there's been qu quite an in-depth uh uh discussion that uh covers all the ins and outs the pluses and minuses but this was actually rather quick um Again, it's, I think, the close to the last item that was in uh, Tuesday night's, night's council meeting. Uh, anybody else I might have missed? But I will certainly take your information, and Lucas is there. He can share that in his next uh, meeting with the uh, city manager mm -hmm. and, and share our thoughts with them. Um, any other commissioner comments? Okay, we done that? Yeah. Okay, tell my gavel, it's imaginary. <laughs> Thank you all. Yes, Hello, Gina, I'm sorry, Gina. Yes, Gina. No, I, was just, I was just saying nice to see everybody's faces. That's my comment. <laughs> yes, it is. I agree. I, I really missed being at home and not being able to, to see everyone. So it's nice at least to see smiles. It is, it is. <laughs> Thank you all.